Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we've got a Giro Hot Tech Special. Ganners, custom bike, new canyons, new Oakleys, lightweight through axles, knit solos, helmet. Oh, it's just the tip of the tech icebergs, loads. Plus, this week, we're bringing you the show from Push Cartel, one of the world's best bike shops here in the Lake District in the UK, where we're actually filming all week, but well, hopefully going to get some riding in as well. That's oh, very nice in here, isn't it? Very nice. First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. So last week, we asked, is graphene the material of the future? And 69% of people said, oh yeah, it's the next big thing. So Oof, there, you, there go. you go. Graphene is the next big thing, according to the viewers. Yes. Mm. Now, first up in our Giro Hot Tech, we have to talk about Ganner's TT bike. So Filippo Ganner smashed the opening time yeah. trial aboard this Pinarello Belide, which had been custom painted by Pinarello. And it's like, Incredible, like electric, metallic blue. Oh, it's chrome, it's, it is insane. Yeah, isn't with it? then silver metallic details on it, including the Pinarello logo. It's like a brushed effect on there. Oh, I mean, it looks incredible. And it even says Top Gamma on the head tube. Well, and along the top tube, it's got all his biggest achievements as well. Yeah. And have you seen how massive that chainring is? 58 teeth on that thing. So as well as that large chainring, it's got those massive wheels on it, which are insane. Yeah, so I've done a bit of detective work and uh, uh, it's interesting, these wheels. So the front wheel he's using is actually an Aero Coach Titan from British brand Aero Coach. And what's particularly interesting about this is that they're not the only team using them. Jumbo Visma are also using these front wheels. And these are both two teams that uh, have, have tested everything that's out there and both come to the conclusion that this is the fastest front time trial wheel and they're using it. And it's 100 mil deep. It's, it's, called, it's called the detail. Titan, it's, yeah. it's massive. Also, some other interesting designs on this wheel. It's got a super narrow hub on the front. So this is designed to keep the spokes in line and hidden from the wind as much as possible. Also, the hub end caps are aerodynamically shaped, so you have to position those correctly. Well, There's no, they're, they're, they're floating. They oh, they they're move. They pivot, yeah. Oh. Oh, so there's another design feature. Also, it's got a um, hidden valve. It's got a nice little cover on that as well. Yeah, and internalised nipples. It, I mean, it's all the details are there. Yeah. And it's just very deep. Tubeless as well. Oh, yeah? And I know Jumbo Visma have been using Corsa Speed, Vittoria tubeless tyres. Ineos look like they've not been running tubeless because they're continental. Yeah. But they've been using the, uh, well, the Grand Prix TT tyre, but the special 111 compound ones. These are special tyres, these. You can't, we, we can't buy them. But these tyres, they use their, the Continental TT tyre, which has very low rolling resistance, but paired with the tread pattern of a GP4000, which is serendipitously said to be more aerodynamic, saving a, you know, a marginal gain of a watt, but it's important to... That's all the bits that matter, isn't it? Yeah. Latex inner tubes, presumably? Latex inner yeah. tubes. What gives it away is a little gold valve cover. Oh, uh, there using you go. Latex tubes. You said it was about details, didn't you? Yeah. Got the tech magnifying glass out. We also spotted Nibali riding a Bontrager Aeolus 75mm front wheel. So front wheels are getting incredibly deep. And next in Hot Giro Tech are the new Oakley Katos. First spotted at the Vuelta last year, being worn by Chris Froome and Sam Bennett. Now everybody is wearing them, yeah. right? I actually got a set in, in push, so you can... Um, well, you can... Should test them out, Yeah. Uh, they're designed to be more ergonomic, according to Oakley, and give a more unobstructed, uh, wider sort of field of view, mm -hmm. and with a mask-like fit onto your face. So the shape of these is designed to follow the contours of your face, which uh, well, it obviously does. It also has this uh, little adjustable rake design on here, which allows for 30 degrees of adjustability, so that you can fit lots of different face shapes. Well, there's certainly a, a statement. They are statement they, pieces. They, yeah. they definitely stand out from all the other glasses around on the market. But uh, I, I think we need to have a hot or not poll. So click down below and vote now. Do you think the new Oakley Katos are hot or not? Up next, we've got Nizzolo's custom helmet. Yeah, a, bit, a curious one this. Nizzolo's been seen wearing a custom painted helmet with a mock COVID declaration form yeah. on the top of it. A little bit strange, but Italy is one of the countries that's been worst affected by COVID, and a form like this was required to travel from region to region, you know, during the height of the pandemic. So Nisolo's kind of, well, presumably got one on his helmet so that he can travel during the Giro 
uh, from region to region as the Giro travels across Italy. But, well, I mean, your guess is as good as ours. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking with Nizolo, though, have you seen his custom-painted BMC time machine in European Champions livery? I've done a nice job with that. It is very cool, I like that. I, I hadn't seen that until you just pointed it out, but something I did spot with my tech magnifying glass, yeah. Alex Dowsett's overshoes. Oh, they do look fancy, don't they? Well, look, very fancy. So, using my tech magnifying glass, I've worked, I think, there from Vortec, the British uh, company oh, yeah. based in the Silverstone Wind Tunnel yeah. that's doing a lot of top secret Olympic Games aero tech. Yeah. 600 pounds a pair of those overshoes. God, I'm um, glad you said a pair actually. <laughs> yeah, but he, um, he well, uh, then they get, uh, the, case, the case continues, the plot thickens because his teammate, uh, DeMarkey, was seen wearing a pair as well. But these looked like they were Dowsett's uh, British champs ones because they had the red, white, and blue on them. He must have stolen them out of his washing. Well, he's either stolen them from Dowsett, or yeah. Dowsett's kindly lent the marquee a, a pair and used his second pair that were just black. I tell you what, if I had a £600 pair of overshoes, I would not be lending them out. Oh, OK. No. Sorry, mate, you can't borrow mine. Oh. Movistar have been spotted riding a brand new Speedmax. Now, the Speedmax has been around for some time now. It was then updated in a disc version, and then has been updated further with this, the all-singing, all-dancing CFR version. And crucially, it's now UCI legal. So the Canyon Speedmax disc was a triathlon bike and not UCI legal, but it's been refined also with the help of Swiss side, the aero experts, who claim it's nine watts faster at 45 kilometers an hour now, which is a significant amount in this game. Over an already aero bike. It might not sound much, but yeah. you know, that, that's a lot. And one of the ways it's achieved this is by making use of the new UCI rules on frame design. So the seat stays is said to be just eight millimetres thick. That's, yeah. I mean, it's so thin to the yeah. wing. And if you look at the fork blades as well, how much deeper they are, it's more aerodynamic. And they're designed to shroud the front caliper as well. Yeah, side on, you almost can't see the caliper. Yes. It covers it that much. And direct the airflow over mm. it. One of the key parts of any time trial bike is the fit and adjustability of the bike. And when you order this bike, you can choose whatever base bar you like that Canyon offer. And also, you'll get the ability to contact one of the Canyon experts and get your bike fitted and set up exactly how you want it. That's also one of the big advantages of the Canyon Speedmax, is the front end is incredibly adjustable and it's got that modular design so you can just change parts nice and easily. Yeah, it does look very nice. Very Sticking cool. with TT bikes, right? The EOLO team, they caught my eye because they're sponsored by Contador and Basso's brand Aurum. Yeah. But Aurum only has the Magma climbing bike at the moment. They don't have a TT bike. So I was interested what they'd be riding in a TT and paying, they were riding an unbranded frame, but it appears to be a Ribble Ultra TT bike that they were using in, in the stage one time. Interesting. Policy. Yeah, very interesting. You've spotted a lot, haven't you? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've, I've spotted a lot. Uh, some other observations of mine are some riders were using one by setups yeah. in the time trial because it's said to be more aerodynamic. It reduces the frontal area a bit, getting rid of the derailleur and another chain ring. Campenarts and Max Valscheidt were, were both using one by systems. And there seemed to be no consensus as to where the optimal aero position for the quark collector transponder is. Oh yeah, lots of people are in different positions. Yeah, don't they? some people have it on the saddle, some people have it on the seat tube. Ganna had it on the down tube yeah, where the bottle tucked, was. Yeah, tucked behind where the bottle would go. Yeah, yeah that's good it was idea. just all over the place. Mm. So, I don't know. Well, anyway, let us know what hot tech and what things you've spotted at the Giro so far down in the comments. Well, we might have missed some. Uh, well, we probably have. Yeah. So now time for hot tech, starting with a brand new bike that you can buy but you can't even ride. So Colnago are the first brand in the world to launch an NFT bike, so it's a non-functional token. It's basically a um, digital artwork of a brand new bike. What do you think of that? I don't understand. Yeah, I think lots of people won't understand. So you can't even buy this bike with real money. You can only buy it with a digital currency. Um, and the currency is only 1.5 of whatever this digital currency is, which currently is over £5,000 if you want to buy that stuff. It's all very confusing, but apparently people that know computers will know this. People that know computers. Mm. <laughs> there you go, a bike for people that know computers. <laughs> Well, from a bike you can buy but can't ride to a bike that you can ride, Canyon yeah. has another new bike. It's a gravel bike 
and it's called the Grizzle. Designed with modularity in mind to give more people more choice, so it can suit all sorts of different riding styles, be that bike packing, it could be racing, or it could be just your everyday cycling. So the main thing behind it is kind of trying to give more people more choice. So this frame is available in a CFSL version and also a CFSLX. And just 950 grams, they say, frame weight. Yeah. For, for the, the top end one, yeah. which is really light for a gravel bike. It also looks quite similar to the Canyon Ultimate, and they seem to have done away with the hover bar that you had on the Grail. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a, a very smart looking bike. It's a cool bike. I like that. And they've also teamed up with Apadura, so you've got custom-made bike bags perfectly suited to the frame. Hot group set tech next up, and SRAM have launched a new patent for a lever design, which uses a single blade and a dual pivot design. So instead of using just the one pivoting point, so the lever, as you brake, moves back towards the bar, they're looking at using that same blade lever to operate the gear lever instead of having that separate paddle. So crucially, the key thing to this is getting the angles correct on the pivots, because otherwise, if they're not correct, you run the risk of inadvertently shifting gear when you're trying to brake, or inadvertently braking when you're trying to change gear. Well, that isn't, uh, I wonder if we'll see that in future SRAM group sets. If we do, one of the key designs to this is that it will make the lever far more compact. So you've just got a single blade design. Hmm. Nice. Very cool. Uh, finally, this week in Hot Tech, we've got some new lightweight through axles. These are from a German company called Acera. Germans love making lightweight carbon stuff and they're very good at it. Uh, these are carbon through axles with titanium end caps uh, so that they can be screwed in. They weigh just 19 to 28 grams according to the website. It's very light. Um, they cost, uh, I think, from 100 pounds, so fairly expensive. But in terms of a pounds per gram saving, it's actually a pretty cost effective area yeah. of your bike to save weight. A lot of disc brake bikes have very heavy through axles. Yeah. They're just like yeah. solid steel. But 19 grams, cut for. Oh. Cool thing about these is each one that you order is custom made to your bike. So there's absolutely no way you get that little bit of extra thread that pokes out the end sometimes. Oh, quite, Super slick. I quite like a set of those. More, mm. more hot tech next week. It's now time for snacks of every other week, starting mm. with. Well, it was actually my birthday just a few days ago. I'm sure, story. sure you're well aware of it. And at GCM Megabase, we've been inundated with cakes, snack deliveries, just you barely open the front door. But with me today, I've bought in a nice little homemade brownie here, which if I turn this to the side, you'll be able to see, customized with almonds, we've got Happy B Day Alex. Look at that, yeah. just what a time to be alive. Well, that'll, that'll get you around our Lake District ride tomorrow. Well, I think if I eat it all at once, I might not make the Doesn't ride. And there, not a, not a snack, but uh, a nice a nice chap called um, Leon White has, has written us a letter. Oh, has he, he sent you a cake? No, well, no, he's not sent a cake, um, but he sent me some forceps. Oh. <laughs> now he says that these are one of the most useful uh, non-bike mechanic tools that a bike mechanic can have. Um, in his time as a bike mechanic, and so he's, he's, he's shared the words. And they're amazing. Look at this. Look at the way they do that. You pull it open, it's like inverse scissors. He amazing. says they're incredibly useful for internal cable routing and little fiddly situations and getting in. And, and I, can, I can see it. I think these, I think that's great. Do you know what? Thanks. Thanks, Leon. I've got something good for you. I'll give you hundred pounds if you can eat all of this brownie with only the four sets. Just with... <laughs> okay. We'll save that for GCN Tech after dark. Mm. Now time for screw riding upgrades by Upgrades, where you submit evidence of the upgrades you've made to your bike's equipment or cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCN water bottle. I haven't got any with us today. Anyway, what happened last week? So last week, the upgrades we had were, um, whose upgrade was the best? We had Snazzy with their Colour Shift single speed bike, and then we had Guy Mulebrook with his gravel bike conversion, and 65% of the viewers have voted for Snazzy's colour shift upgrade. Similar design to what Manon did that. Oh, right. Super cool. Inspired, nice. Get in contact, uh, Snazzy, and we'll get a bottle out to you. Uh, who have we got first this week, Alex? First off, we've got Nigel Laffan, who says, well, he's got a confession. He says he hasn't got a clue what he was doing a few months ago when uploading a picture of his bike. Um, wow. So what have we got? We've got oh, I see he's got a BMX. Wow. So he found an old, discarded, heavily rusted BMX, stripped it down, primed it, and painted it with a black and gold theme. That's incredible. It's, and he's now... Whoa, yeah, an, that is cool. It's an S-Works BMX now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you've that taken amazing. every single part off this bike, painstakingly cleaned it all, and How then painted cool it. How cool are those tyres? That looks proper yeah. cool, doesn't it? Yeah, I had to be fair, I had to put this in, even though it's a BMX. It's, and a gold it's chain. super cool. Oh. Um, it's not going to be plain sailing, though. It never Sean is. Sean M. Surd has, um, well, after hearing Sai's derision of the idea of a 44 uh, grand rally town bike at the top of this week's GCN show, um, he had to share this uh, restyle of his uh, wife's childhood rally M40 into a comfy city cruiser. Have a look at this. So nothing mechanical to note, but he's added some velo orange porter handlebars and some snakeskin fenders, along with a Targus rack and oh. some walled baskets. I mean, look at this. You get your whole weekly shopping with that bike. You would. Uh, uh, he, he's, he's swapped over the, the grip shifters and the, and, and the brake levers without compromising any functionality whatsoever. I, I think, well, I think that looks fantastic. Both bikes look cool, very different bikes. He's, he, he also says that she's ridden it more time in the last week than she has in the last three years. Well, I'm since, not surprised. Since the upgrade. What were those upgrades? I thought, well, yeah, very good. I'm impressed. But who wins? You decide. Vote down below. Best upgrade gets a bottle. It's now time for our favourite part of the show, the bike vault. Yes, where we judge your bikes to be either nice or super nice. And if they're super nice, we ring... Oh, what are we going to do? Uh, bear with. Of uh. course we've got a bell. All the bikes in here are super nice. Yeah. Oh, anyway, um, yes, we ring the bell and your bike gets committed to the Bike Vault fraternity. You can play along at home uh, by voting on all the bikes featured in the GCN app and submit your own bikes too. But I think before we get onto this week's bikes, we need to have a recap of the rules. Yeah, we do. We keep getting slammed in the comments for this. People are not happy about some of our judgments on the bikes. So, as a bit of a recap, no accessories on the bike. It's got to be drive side only, the picture. You've got to have your cranks aligned. Well, to be fair, you've got to have everything aligned. If you can align it, Make sure it's aligned in the picture. And the final most important rule, we make the rules and we can break the rules. And there are no rules, except the rules that we make. First up this week, we've got Ross Mayer with his De Rosa Pininfarina. Oh, it's, it's a very smart bike, isn't it? Oh, I like the God, envy wheels on there as well. Oh, Seller Italia SLR saddle, same saddle as me. Crank's not aligned, we've, just, we've only just said this. It's a funny angle, isn't it? Yeah, Jaunty I, I angle. I think it's on a wall, is it on display on a wall? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Amazing bike. Unfortunately, nice. it's just going to be a nice. Uh, Jonas Stefan dot de um, has submitted this Chinelli Vigorelli HSL. Wow, what do you make of that? Oh, I like that. You can almost um, just about see them in the reflection of the window. Yes. Um, <laughs> Super cool bike though. I like the paint scheme. It's cool. It's a nice town bike. It's a very cool town bike. One of those. Wheels speed. not aligned, cranks not aligned. To be fair, he can't go, well, he is in Biggie Smalls, so it's single speed. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be just a nice again. Where's the third cushion? Yeah. Nice. Um, next up, we've got Elliot.0116. Good username, of course, with his Van, Van Dessel. What have we got that? Good photo. I like the oh, yeah. I like the sense of perspective. It's a gravel bike, yeah. so and he's on an adventure, so we can leave some accessories on there. Cranks too. aligned nice. in the crank I'm gear. Nice I'm no super nice. Yeah, I'm gonna I go super, super nice on that. Yeah, ring the yeah. bell. It's very civilized that bell, isn't it? Uh, Hurst's two ounce uh, has got his KTM here. His KTM Finks two point two nine. What the? Where's Where's the bike gone? That I mean, was outrageous to picture. The bike vault. Oh God, despair. We we nice. I'm not Next even going to not even going to devote a nice to that. Next one is Julien Dot Bidon. Um, and he says his bike was stolen from Cambridge on the 2nd of May 2021. This isn't Crime Stoppers. Yeah. Not if anyone's it. seen this bike, get in contact have to Julien. Yeah. If yeah. you have yeah, if you, if you have seen um, this Focus KO. Focus KO 2012. Lovely picture of it. I can see why it was stolen. It's just, it's just, I think why well, biggie big actually. It better it keeps the chain parallel. Mm. Like the top of the bottom of the chain is parallel. Right. I, I just said I'd allow that. Super nice. Yeah. Mm. Because his bike, I mean, I feel sorry for him as yeah. well. Okay, you get a super nice. Ring the bell. And uh, is this the last one this week? Farid, 225, with his Bianchi Gold Race Special. 
Was it Campagnolo? Veloci groups? Oh, come on. Oh, is, look at that. That is a beauty, isn't it? I mean, he's in. He's trolling us, I think, with his gear at Yeah. But those, uh, are they Shamals on there? Quite I think they might be. Yeah. Um, I really like that. Super cool colour. It is, isn't it? It's such a nice bike, but, but what's going on with the... The, I, I, the cranks and the line is in the little chain Too ring. many infractions. Too many infractions. It's nice. just a nice, I'm afraid. Nice. That's unfortunately it for the bike vault, which also means it's unfortunate it for this week's GCN Tech Show. It does, but big thanks to Push Cartel for putting us up in Ambleside so we weren't out filming the tech show in the rain on the streets and make sure you check out GCN Plus because we've got some amazing documentaries coming that are particularly into tech if that's your bag which I guess it is if you've made it this far through the show. Uh, the next one is Game Changers GPS. Big deep dive into GPS tech and how it's changed cycling forever. Right we better go and um, get Should we get some right. dinner? Yeah let's do it. I'm yeah. starving. See you later. Bye.